Thank you very much. And I think we can just continue the discussion that our colleague from Cloud Faro has uh, brought. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Benjamin. I work for EODC, which is the Earth Observation Data Center. Uh, we are located in Vienna. Very similar to Cloud Faro, we uh, offer uh, EO data in our storage. And I just wondered how many of you actually know EODC? Can you raise your hand? Okay, not even half of the audience. So uh, perfectly, I have provided uh, a couple of slides. So um, what we do basically, we are closely connected to the Technical University of Vienna. Therefore, we have a strong focus on timeliness specifically for Sentinel-1 data. Um, we, uh, uh, but also we host uh, Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-3 data. Um, Additionally, um, through our connection to the Central Meteorological Agency of Austria, uh, we host also ERA-5 data and Austrian local data sets. Um, additionally, we also have a stack catalog, but we'll come to that later a bit. Uh, where are we active? Um, we are active actually in the Copernicus Global Land uh, Survey. Um, so this, uh, especially in the soil moisture, surface soil moisture uh, area, uh, together also with uh, the Technical University. Um, then we are active in the Copernicus uh, Climate Change Service in the Lot 4, uh, Land Hydrology and Cryosphere. Um, and we are organizing that, so we are leading the, uh, this activity, uh, the Lot 4. Um, and uh, two years ago about, I think, uh, the global flood monitoring started uh, on EODC, uh, on EODC um, services, so you can go there and after a huge uh, flood uh, happened, um, you can actually look at the data quite soon afterwards. Um, usually the data should be available uh, four to six hours afterwards, the requirement is eight. So. Um, uh, then you can actually see a flood algorithm ran and uh, that's also provided to the countries that have been flooded if they activate the emergency service, which they usually do. Um, what do we have? Similar to our colleagues from Cloud Faro, we host an EODC cloud um, service in op uh, on OpenStack. Um, also uh, closely connected uh, a storage system with a tape storage and this is all linked with a high-speed link uh, to the Vienna scientific cluster. Um, additionally, uh, there is uh, a second site where basically this global flood monitoring also can run. Uh, so we have <coughs> actually, in, in case of emergency fire or something in the, in the computer center, uh, you can actually switch over and uh, run the flood monitoring on, a, on another system, uh, which is also located in Vienna. Um, so, when we take a step back and go back to Julia Wagemann's talk this morning, um, or this uh, early afternoon, um, we uh, saw that these cloud platforms, um, ha or these, these EO platforms, the traditional way we had them in the last 15 years, uh, had have a, a, a large drawback. So basically, um, the, the fragmentation between the cloud providers uh, within Europe was large, unlike the US where you have Amazon and Google um, and planetary compute. Um, then you still have the pre prevalence of um, the old virtual machine models. So you basically go and book a virtual machine and, and access the files um, without, and then you need to do the file management, and then you need to do um, uh, all, all that as a researcher, and that's all what you don't want to do. You want to do your research, right? So, um, therefore, um, in in a Horizon 2020 project, project. Oh, this is rendered a bit weird, but anyway. Um, in a Horizon 2020 project, uh, pr project, we came up with this Open EO API. Um, that lets you connect as a as your client to different backends. So basically, this um, intuitive um, programming language allows you to connect um, to any kind of backend that provides the API. And in the next step, um, in an ESA project that is uh, shortly finishing, uh, we are providing the OpenEO platform, which basically adds another aggregation layer 
uh, on top of these infrastructures. And you can also see basically these, this is a federation layer, right? So we federated actually the data catalogs, we federated um, the, the, the compute as well. Um, and you can run your code basically on the federated infrastructure. And federation is a key here. So basically what I wanted to show you here is that this stock catalog, the spatial temporal asset catalog really provides across providers the same metadata and you can even federate these, these catalogs together and then um, offer them in a way. So my answer to you, uh, uh, say would be that uh, I don't think we should centralize all data because for instance, uh, EODC hosts uh, local Austrian data that you wouldn't get at uh, any other data provider. And that would be really unfortunate for a researcher from another country or from another, um, uh, yeah, from another institution to not have this data available or accessible actually. So my clear answer would be the key is federation because otherwise you will not be able in the end to find any data that you potentially need. Uh, it depends of obviously on which level you want to federate. But uh, for instance, we have managed this in OpenEO uh, platform, but we have also managed this in Cscale, uh, which this talk should have been about, but <laughs> uh, the project finished three days ago. So therefore um, my colleague couldn't come and I took it over. So in Cscale, we actually offered this EO metadata query service. Cloudfare is also a part of it. So um, you can actually find a joint collection of EODC and Cloudfaro and other providers, Chestnet, Terrascope, and Synergize, uh, Synergize is an open EO platform actually, yeah. So additionally to the um, federation of data or of the data catalog, you would need also um, a framework that allows you to do fair scientific computing and data access. And uh, what we think at EODC, that's our opinion, is actually that the Pangeo community who hosts um, this development and, and uh, yeah, the community driven open source coding for Dask, X-Array um, actually can provide a really nice uh, yeah, base layer or base code layer to actually interact with the data. So um, here, uh, our OpenEO backend, obviously there are different OpenEO backends around and you can, um, you can choose to interact with any of them, but our OpenEO backend is actually Pangeo compliant. That means um, that you can actually uh, also ingest technically your own X-ray code and run it on there as an OpenEO process fairly easy. Um, exactly, now to the C-scale uh, infrastructure. So, um, and this is maybe complementary to the first talk of, of the session um, where GEOS was shown and uh, the, the GEOS portal, um, the C-scale project actually extended uh, the European Open Science Cloud. That means that um, you can go now to the EOS portal and search for these data services as a researcher and request actually access to either the Earth Observation Metadata Query Service or to the OpenEO platform uh, or to the FedEarth data. Um, and finally, I want to draw a bit of a conclusion around this. Where does this end up, right? We have now all these European projects where we started from basically having um, the downfall or the downside of having to access data um, through virtual machines and, and not through platforms. Now the, these platforms have been evolved. Where does this really uh, go, right? And the European Commission has... Um, uh, has uh, put us or has has asked us to actually through a communicative support action to uh, to draw out a roadmap for the Green Deal data space. The European Green Deal, as you all know, is um, the most uh, yeah prestigious and and uh, actionate 
law or not law, but uh, uh, yeah, European Commission uh, initiative. And um, now we are actually in the phase that lays out the roadmap for the entire uh, uh, Green Deal data space. So how can you find data? How can you access data? And so on is uh, in the terms of, of climate change is actually uh, tackled there. Um, these are the partners, just so you know, you can look them up later if you like. So um, to finalize my talk, I think I'm finished with the time as well. Um, what, what I wanted to state is actually that we in, in Europe have the chance actually through gaining this federation and this community basically, and therefore we can provide or we can abstract complexity in the federation. We can provide transparent th transparency through open science, and um, we can provide also pixel to continent to scalability by having multiple backends on multiple cloud infrastructures or HPCs computing at the same time. And I think that Destination Earth will give us the opportunity sh to show that that Europe can do this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Benjamin, for this wonderful presentation, right on time. Do we have questions for Benjamin? Okay. Thanks, Benjamin. I think that was the perfect uh, kind of- uh, Wrap up. Uh, no co complimentary presentation to what we have seen before. And I think it, it, it highlights the key question is really how long do we have to wait till we see that federation really alive? And of course, I mean, coming from the commission, I know that everyone looks at the commission, but, but it, I think it's, it's something you shouldn't wait for politics here. You have to, to, first of all, technically see what is possible, what can be done, actively uh, uh, make kind of make showcases, see that it's technically feasible. I'm sure it, once it works, you will find also sponsors, but we don't have much time left because uh, the, the volumes increase, the copying of data makes no sense, as you said. Do you think that can be done? And that question is the one I would have also asked uh, uh, to the previous speaker. Do you think that is feasible in one to two years or will we lose out to, to the big players in the field? I don't think the big players will, I don't think we will lose in a sense that, you know, Amazon, Google, or planetary computer will take over all the data that Europe ever can host. So there needs to be a collaboration happening on, on some level, right? I think that's my answer. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything against these platforms as such, but the, the point here really is, can we set up a federation under our sort of say ruling system, our under, under, under our umbrella? That, that essentially collects all these assets so that they can, the users are not longer, no longer basically burdened with the, Lost, yeah. the, the, the complexity of it. They basically should navigate that in there as if it was one system of systems as these things were already called 20 years ago. I think there is another comment for, to this or directly. Anyway, what I think is, Yes, we can do it, but there needs collaboration to happen, right, on, a, on certain levels. And I'm not only talking about technical collaboration, but also inter-organizational collaboration. So, yeah. Uh, just on the same topic, Peter. Uh, I think you are on the right track, but you need to describe exactly what the Federation would do. At the simplest level, if Federation means that you are able to obtain data from various sources from your end, the problem is solved with Stack because you can query catalogs and get the data if you have permission. If what you want is to write scripts that would run on different machines. Something runs on the Cloud Ferro, Copernicus, and then a part runs there on, on uh, uh, Earth Observation Data Cube in Vienna, and then somewhere else runs on Amazon. Then I think this is a can of worms 
because you would need essentially to have not only that all platforms would support OpenEO, but all platforms would support the same versions of OpenEO yeah. and access the same comments. Yeah. One thing is to say, I have an OpenEO, but there is no obligation in OpenEO that the implementation made available at the Copernicus data ecosystem provides the same functionality as the implementation available in OA EODC. And this has very good reasons why it may not happen. Uh, it's not just because of whim of people. And um, I mean, of course, the commission can look at it carefully and try to bring people together. But the level of interoperability that would allow this complete uh, work there is a complex interface that really does not, it, it's not something that we can take lightly. It would take a huge amount of work and it, fairly speaking, it's not much on the responsibilities of the data providers like EODC. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a much more complicated organization that will take some time before it's even possible for us to discuss. I'm not saying we should not discuss, but I'm saying that EODC should be there, a Copernicus data ecosystem should have time to grow a little bit before we, we're discussing this world of federation. 